There's so many reasons to be alive. Just one more day, I wanna feel alright. So many plans that could be realized. Just give me one more day. There's so many reasons to be alive. Just one more day, I wanna feel alright. So many plans that could be realized. Just give me one more day. So we definitely have some scotch here. Okay. Bottoms up. Oak, maybe <laughs> orange peel. Goes down pretty easily. It's pretty smooth. It's not very smoky at all. It's really smooth. What can I say? I drink that. I definitely can taste some vanilla. Hints of caramel, I would say. Hints of caramel. Clearly, we're not whiskey aficionados. To be honest, I never used to drink whiskey at all, but as I got older, wine gave me heartburn and beer started giving me the farts. So I changed to whiskey and it changed the way I drink altogether. Today we want to talk not about how whiskey changed how we drink, but how mirrorless has changed how we shoot. Being as old as we are, we've seen firsthand some pretty radical changes to the photography industry. When we began our careers as full-time photographers, though the event video industry had already gone digital via DV tape formats, the event and wedding photography industry was very much still in the film era. Although digital cameras like the fixed lens Olympus E10 and Sony DSC F707 existed, and even a couple of DSLR bodies had been launched, they weren't yet replacing wedding photographers' film kits, which were usually medium format based. Digital SLRs evolved at a ravenous pace though, and it wasn't long before film was all but replaced. That brings us to today, where many photographers are embracing the newer mirrorless format. Back when we first tried the Sony a7 III last year, we were instantly smitten. At that point there was no Canon or Nikon competing full frame mirrorless camera, so this new Sony was our only taste of full frame mirrorless. Though it arguably may not be as revolutionary as the jump from film to digital, it definitely has absolutely changed the way we shoot. So let's take a look at some of those differences. Oh, you bastard. Let Don't do tell it. them about the make. Let them do it. I used to get a big red pimple right on the end of my nose at the beginning of every wedding season. This was from my nose constantly rubbing on the back of a DSLR. One of the most obvious changes in our shooting style with mirrorless is the fact that our camera is no longer tethered to our eye for most of the day. Now, if you're like us, that habit won't be instantly broken. We started off mostly using the EVF, but as we shot more with mirrorless, we found ourselves pulling the camera away from our faces more and more. This has been a huge benefit and one of the bigger changes. Gone are the days of crouching tiger, uh, standing on a chair or laying on the ground and getting all dirty. Being in tighter situations and being able to simply shoot from wherever you can reach rather than where you can put your head is great. Not only that, but now I feel much more aware of my surroundings since I'm not constantly covering my peripheral with a viewfinder. Most DSLRs have live view, but it's generally a compromised experience with Contrast Detect AF. Canon's dual pixel is an exception here, where their DSLR Live View AF is actually seriously good. Another big DSLR habit that mirrorless virtually eliminates is chimping. For those who aren't familiar with the term, it means to constantly review your images on the back of the LCD while you're shooting. I'm sure most DSLR shooters can admit to doing this. And as we all know, this was one of the greatest benefits that digital brought over film. It allowed us to quickly verify all sorts of variables to make sure everything looked okay while we still had the chance to do something about it. Mirrorless has made the concept of chimping a bit unnecessary, since much of the things we check for in chimping, such as color and exposure, we can now see before we even take the shot. After switching to mirrorless, it didn't take me long to realize that I no longer needed to use the auto image review. 
Throughout my entire photography career, I shot with my DSLR in manual mode. This meant I was constantly keeping the exposure triangle at the forefront of consideration at all times. Always balancing shutter speed, aperture, and ISO settings for every single shot. It became second nature, like driving a car with manual transmission. Unlike film, where a common practice was just F8 and be there, digital was much less forgiving and it required much more careful consideration for exposure. Mirrorless is great for shooting manual and balancing the exposure triangle, but what surprised us the most was how real-time preview actually emboldened us to embrace the automatic exposure modes and white balance modes. Since we can now see what the camera is going to give us in auto modes before we take the shot, we can actually cozy up to the idea of using aperture priority, auto ISO and even auto white balance. Nowadays, we find that we're shooting with an auto parameter in at least some capacity most of the time, and most of the time, it's just a simple little EV comp adjustments here and there. It's all we need to get the correct exposure. When we started the East Core, we had a very clear vision for our wedding photography. We wanted to be capturing more real moments in a photojournalistic manner with less of a focused on stage poses. Mirrorless is allowing us to catch more of these moments because we aren't so focused on our camera settings before each shot as we were with DSLRs. Another major change when switching to mirrorless is with the autofocus system. Like many professionals, we used to set our DSLRs up for back button autofocus. This was because we wanted autofocus engagement to be separate from the shutter button. The main reason for this is because we didn't want to be refocusing and recomposing on a series of static shots. Since a DSLR's autofocus system is basically a bunch of points clustered around the center point, it was important to be able to quickly disable autofocus for any sort of off-center composition. Using a thumbstick on the back of a DSLR in order to change autofocus points can be helpful but also a hindrance. If your DSLR had lots of autofocus points, you would take forever just to move to the desired autofocus point. If you disable most of the autofocus points, you could select them faster, but now you have less autofocus points. Um, on the Sony a7 III, we can simply touch wherever you want to focus on the back of the LCD, which is light years better than any DSLR autofocus. We also have face detect and eye detect autofocus. So most of the time, we don't even have to tell the camera where we want to focus. It would simply find the subject anywhere in the frame and lock focus on their nearest eye. With mirrorless, we have so many tools for focusing anywhere in the scene quickly and accurately. There's no longer any need for back button focus or focus and recomposing. Another benefit of mirrorless is that we no longer have to calibrate each lens to our bodies for microfocus. It was not such a big deal if we were shooting stop down, but we prefer to use f1.4 prime lenses and like to often shoot wide open. Even calibrated, we never found DSLRs to be very consistent with primes. We have now shot with the Canon EOS R, the Nikon Z6, and the Sony a7 III. Though the performance varies from system to system, they all seem to outperform DSLR when it comes to autofocus precision and accuracy with prime lenses wide open. We actually made a video last year that demonstrated this pretty evidently. And though many people felt that we were being pro-Sony biased, there was no competing Canon or Nikon mirrorless at the time. If we were to repeat the same video today and include the Canon and Nikon mirrorless bodies, it would be quickly evident that it's not necessarily the Sony that's superior with the primes, it's mirrorless altogether. Back in the pre-digital era, most wedding photographers didn't have to bother with color correction or Lightroom. They just handed the film over to the lab. When digital took over, some variants of culling, correction, and editing workflow became a part of the process more. We saw some photographers' shot counts go from a couple hundred to literally thousands of shots per wedding. And sometimes we found ourselves spending more time in Lightroom than actually shooting. One effect that mirrorless has had on our photography is that we now find ourselves shooting less, but still coming back with a better quality and variety of shots. Put it another way, we're generally shooting more keepers this is likely a side effect of all of the other points we went over. More in focus shots, more confidence in the color and metering, less chimping, and the result is less need to overshoot. This results in less time culling and correcting images in post. Now this is likely not going to be the case for everyone who has switched to mirrorless, but 
just something that we personally have noticed. In variety of shots, variety. In variety, yeah. variety. 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 Say variety. 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 I it. Variety. 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 Yeah. Fuck for you, variety. As wedding photography styles and trends have changed over the years, we've also shifted over the years away from a strobist approach to a more journalistic style of wedding photography. Mirrorless has definitely helped with that shift in a multitude of ways. The smaller size and live view style of shooting in combination with that effortless autofocus system has made us more mobile. We find ourselves moving more and with that came the inclination to prefer primes over zooms. As a matter of fact, in the process of transitioning to the Sony system, we ended up offloading all of our zoom lenses and have been shooting exclusively with primes. This has had the effect of us moving around much more on a wedding day, getting more angles and more vantages, resulting in a variety of more interesting shots. Did I just do that? Yeah, you just did that. Banged it out. That happened. All right. Uh, is there any more? Or is that it for me? The <laughs> Christopher Watkins hit. <laughs> Yeah, you're doing good and then you what I need jumble it. is more cowbell. Is that we now find ourselves shooting less, but still coming back with a better quality and variety of shots. <laughs> I can just do a montage of all Don't the you do this, please. please. <laughs> variety. When we started shooting with the Canon 5D Mark IV, we began capturing video clips in between photos. It was a bit cumbersome with a DSLR switching from stills to video, but the Canon dual pixel system really helped. With mirrorless, however, the camera is basically ready at all times to take a photo or a video. No switching modes or flipping to live view. Just hit the shutter for a photo or the record button for a video. With the addition of in-body stabilization, we're now at the point where we can effectively cover a fusion photo and video service seamlessly transitioning between the two. As you can likely tell, we're pretty happy with the move to mirrorless, but there have definitely been some drawbacks. As some of them might actually be deal breakers for some photographers. First and foremost, I still recommend DSLRs for anyone whose main style of photography involves heavy use of studio strobes and flash lighting. This is because the electronic viewfinder can be a hindrance. The EVF is great for live exposure and color preview, but when using flashes and strobes as key light sources, the EVF will actually become dark and kind of a useless void. Most current mirrorless systems will have a DSLR emulation mode, which no longer previews exposure, but this adds extra complication and the risk of unintentionally missing that setting later. Another issue is with mirrorless electronic front curtain shutters at high shutter speeds and large apertures. This is a little known fact, but the electronic front curtain system or EFCS at high shutter speeds actually clips your bokeh. Did I say that right? Bokeh? 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 Anyways, it actually clips your bokeh a little bit and gives the effect of a less pleasing background. Another potential issue that mirrorless users should be aware of when coming from DSLR is the increased risk of sensor damage from sun and laser light sources. This is because the sensors are generally always on, so users have to be careful not to point them towards laser light or directly towards the sun. This one comes firsthand as one of our photographers already had to replace his sensor after basically the first time shooting a reception with laser lighting, only to discover pink spots visible in every single shot after. Though mirrorless cameras, as of now, are much smaller than comparable DSLRs, and that reduced size and weight may be easier on the arms, they arguably appear a little less professional to clients. This is debatable though, and certainly won't be an issue for many, but for some, it may be a bit of a concern. Finally, although going mirrorless is indeed a bit of a learning curve, believe it or not, going back to DSLR is a bit of a steeper one. After spending months using mirrorless and then going back to my DSLR, I have to admit, it was not like riding a bike. I was simply just not comfortable going as back to DSLR as I thought I would be. This is all due to the ways that mirrorless has changed the way we shoot altogether. Thank you for watching our little video on how mirrorless has changed how we shoot. And remember, know your limits with whiskey. But there are no limits to photography. No? But we don't have a catchphrase yet. And variety of. And variety. And variety of. Hold on one second. Say variety. 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 Flipping. Variety. 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 Variety.
Variety. Variety. Variety. And variety. Do you think we're gonna get away with the variety? Or no? Jay, I know you're dying back there. Variety. <laughs> variety. I know it's a common word, but uh um, <laughs> pretty common word.